Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Sports Central. I'm Neil Duncan. Coming up, we've got a great show. We've got Gage Hollingsworth and Philip Monte here to talk about the Sunshine State Games, Sandy Horan from the Polk Museum of Art to talk about Innescape, and Ronnie Gent here to talk about American Youth Football. Stick around, everybody, for this week's edition of Sports Central. Welcome back to Sports Central. This first segment brought to us by the Hyatt Place Lakeland Center. I'm Neil Duncan alongside John Oney and John, another Sports Central. A lot of exciting things going on here in Polk County. Unbelievable. Another great uh, show we've got in store for all our viewers today, but uh, a lot of good things coming up in the county. Well, one of those events that uh, has been coming to us for a while now and kind of found a permanent home in Polk County is the Sunshine State Games. And uh, I know it's an event that you've helped work on over the years and a great economic impact for Polk County. Yeah, it really is. I mean, can you name all seven of the, the different competitions for the Sunshine State Games? Yeah, right. I'm putting you on the spot early, I know, but... Well, all I know is we have wrestling, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue right out of that. Gage Hollingsworth and Philip Monte are here uh, on the show with us, guys. Welcome to the show, and I appreciate you coming out. Thank, Thank you. you. Sunshine State Games, you're both are wrestlers, and mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be competing, and uh, what does this event mean to you guys, and what's it all about? Well, um... Last year, I competed in this event, and it's just like it, it's a good. Uh, it helps you judge like how far you've progressed during the season. Kind of a, a benchmark measuring yeah. against the rest of the state. It just, it's just like one of those things that um, lets you see your goals. You know, like you're getting that much closer to. Uh, to where you need to be. <laughs> yeah, well, if you want to be the best, you got to go up against the best, right? Uh, Philip, this is your first year in the event, is that correct? Um, I'm just excited to be wrestling in this tournament. I just think of it as more experience for this upcoming year. Great. Yeah. Great. great. It's, and it's a great event and certainly a great experience for you guys. Um, tell us, how, how long have you guys been wrestling? I mean, this obviously isn't your first year. How long have you guys been doing this? Well, I have a year behind me. I started my freshman year. Oh, fantastic. Okay. This actually is my first year. Is it really? Congratulations. Are you nervous? Or are you excited? Or how's um, I'm excited. Excellent. Do you guys want, you've only wrestled for competitively for one year? Yes, sir. Wow. And in uh, both of you are at Lakeland High School, is that correct? Yes, yes sir. And uh, you guys, did you guys win the district this year? Or last year won the district? We won the district this past, year. Yeah. Well, First year winning the district, I mean, where do you go from there? Maybe trying to get to a state title down the road? Yeah, uh, definitely. I, um, I qualified for state this year, and my goal is to, to uh, bring home a state title. So. Of course, everybody in the state of Florida, I would think, aspires to be Brandon High School, because that, <laughs> that seems to talk about a benchmark uh, in the state for wrestling. But uh, as you look at the summer, obviously, uh, you compete as a team during the school uh, year. But in the summer, uh, Sunshine State game, obviously, is one of those events. Uh, you guys are trying to get better, but you're also trying to get some colleges to take a look at you. Is this one of those events where you can do that? Um, yeah, exactly. Like. Um, there's a lot of people, you know, watch it, of course, so it's a good way to um, get you out there. Guys, it's got to be an experience, too, for you uh, with the Sunshine State Games being in Lakeland. You guys are kind of hometown heroes, obviously, so you're going to have your family and friends, I would assume, out to watch you guys wrestle. What is that, what is that story like for you guys? Are you excited about that? Um, yeah, I'm really excited, actually. I, I always tell all my friends and family to come watch. They, they're normally there every tournament, so mm -hmm. it's good to have all that support. Well, Definitely. talk to us about, you recently won the FAWA FS slash GR State Championships. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and where was that held at? Um, that was held in um, Miami. Okay. And what, what is it? Is it an open uh, invitational, or what it's, kind of event is uh, that? Anyone can wrestle in it. Okay. But, um, it's, it's a qualify, it qualifies you to wrestle for Florida like on the Florida team. So. Team Florida? Yeah, Team Florida. Okay, and, wow. and Team Florida is what I'm assuming like an all-star of the best wrestlers mm -hmm. around the state? And that's, uh, you. if you're on Team Florida, then you compete in the national tournaments okay. representing Florida. Okay, so. you guys, uh, any favorite colleges out there that you watch? I mean, obviously, you're just now really getting uh, your feet wet in the sport of wrestling, but uh, you know, historically, Oklahoma State and programs like that, anybody out there that you, you root for? Um, 
there's no particular college that I like for wrestling. I just I enjoy watching them all. Yeah, and you, you want to get better, so one of those colleges can pay for your education, yeah. right? <laughs> guys, well, that makes sense. Guys, what's it like? I mean, there's two different divisions: a freestyle and a, and a Greco-Roman sort of uh, style. What What do you guys do? And, and what's if you can share what your secret move is? If If you do have one secret move, what is that? I personally like freestyle better, just because it's um, it's a lot like folk style, which is what we do during the season. But it's like not as many rules, like. Folk style is that so? That's the normal, yeah, that's the normal season scoring right. on the, the on yeah. yeah. The high school season. Okay, the high school season. Okay. You know the move that I I like to do is uh, we call it uh, fireman's carry. Mm -hmm. You basically just duck under, you know, like pick them up. Yeah, something? you yeah know. you, you can slip. Can you, you legally get can hurt? Can you demonstrate for us on meal? No, that's no, not no, something no, we're gonna no, do today. No, okay. I really don't want to do that. No. <laughs> What have you learned in your first year of wrestling uh, about commitment and training uh, and that kind of stuff? What What is the Lakeland High School wrestling team meant to you? Um, well, it's meant a lot to me, and it's definitely a full-time commitment mm -hmm. because you have to go to practice every day for a couple of hours. But it's been it's been fun. I've learned a lot from it. Okay. Now, I would think the sport in general. I mean, judging by these guys' phys physical uh, stature. Um, it's a really good sport to stay in shape, and, and so there's got to be a lot of training involved all year round for you guys. Is that true? Yeah, a lot of training. Like we spend lately, we've been spending a lot of time in the weight room, but um, normally we'll have at least like a two and a half, three hour practice five days a week. Wow. So it's really a physical. Well, the Sunshine State Games, June 21st and 22nd. Do you do you find that in the sport of wrestling? Because you know football, you know going to Bryant Stadium there, that's kind of a, a home home field advantage for the football team, or maybe the basketball team playing in the home gymnasium. Or do you find in wrestling that it's the same kind of thing? That if you're wrestling at home or close to home, there's an advantage for you? I yeah, think so. yeah, I think it's it just. Um it's like they're in your house, so you have to right. <laughs> you have to kind of just prove to them that they're not going to come in and beat you. You think that'll carry over here at the Sunshine State Games? Maybe give you guys an advantage by having this statewide event here in Polk County? Definitely, definitely it makes you, um, you know, just proud to to be wrestling for Lakeland. So I'm really excited about that. Okay. Well. Um, I guess we'll have you come back, and we're gonna, you know, we you're gonna it. have the home court advantage or home home mat advantage. You, you should win, right? That's the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. So, so bring us back a couple medals, and you know we'll have you back on the show, and we'll do a little official medal ceremony here for you. But we want to see you guys succeed, and we wish you all the best. Absolutely, well, Gage and Philip, we, we do wish you the best and good luck. And uh, hang around here for a second. We want to talk to you about a, a few other things off fair, and, and and wish you good luck. But uh, right now, we're going to check out some action uh, that was recently shot at the Central Florida Fluid Ski Team trials. So check out this action. John and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. This weekend we've got the uh, U.S. team trials for the under 17 and the 17 to 21 categories they are for the U.S. teams that are going to re be competing uh, in the Junior World Championships and also the Pan Am Championships. So you've got the best skiers in the country all over, from all over the country come here to Polk County, uh, to Lake Groove to compete and then the team will be selected on Sunday afternoon after the results are in. <laughs> We really love Florida. It's a great place to ski. Um, Fluid is just a fantastic ski site. You know, they have two jump ramps set up for us, so no matter which way the wind's blowing, you're always set for a perfect jump. 
I was the uh, Boys 3 national champion in tricks and overall last year, so that's under 18 um, in the trick event, and then overall is all three events. Uh, you know, you gotta do well in all of them to do well at that, so that's really cool. since I was six, grew up in it. My grandparents and parents both were in it, so it kind of went down through the generations. And um, I'm out here right now for team trials is what this tournament is called. Um, it's qualifying for uh, Pan Ams, which is America against South America, and Junior Worlds, which is pretty much kind of our, our version of Olympics. Well, I love being in Florida. It's a lot warmer, obviously, than California, so it's always fun being able to come over here. You know, here in Polk County, this is pretty much the capital of skiing in the world. You got the uh, Water Ski Museum here, you got the ski school here. Um, there's a lot of tournaments around this area. Probably got about 40 competitors, plus their family, friends, supporters. Uh, you got officials all come in, uh, plus all of the, the committees that, are, that, that select the teams, uh, plus the fans that come out and to, to watch, uh, the, watch the event and watch the, the best, best skiers in the country, best junior skiers in the country. Um, I've been to multiple pro events to open up. Uh, there was the LA Night Jam, which was pretty cool. Got to jump at night with the pros. And the uh, Sacramento Gold Rush. Pan American Games, jumped in those. Got first, which was pretty fun. Three national titles. And um, I'm hoping to qualify for the US World Team today. This is a pretty awesome site. I've always liked it. Um, the museum's pretty awesome, and I've always jumped good here, so hoping to keep up the good scores. Just stick with it. It's a fun sport. Just have fun with it. Don't try and push yourself for scores. Just go out and have fun doing what you're doing. I go to school at Florida Southern, which is just down the road. Um, I actually train here all the time while I'm in school, so I really like this place. It's kind of like one of my home training sites. Um, I've been doing this for nine years, and I've been a part of so many different kind of competitions. I've been to the world is the best one, national, states, regionals, uh, team trials, US Open, Masters. Um, I've got to travel to different places, Australia, South America, Europe. The Worlds, we have three different worlds. We have an under 21 world, a junior world, and an elite world. I've skied all three. Um, they take place every two years at different places, like the places I've been to. Um, the next one is going to be in Chile in 2013, and that's going to be the elite world. Out here at Fluent Skiing Sports on Lake Rue, we've got a lot of events. We've got tournaments, uh, about five, six different record tournaments during the year. The Team Trials is one of our biggest ones. Uh, also the Rocketman Night Jump in October, October 13th. Pro event, Night Jump, free entry. Tons of people out here, great show, so come on out and see that one too. have a number of other record, record tournaments and a ski school that runs year round. www.skifluid.com is where you find all the information about our events, uh, the ski school and everything else that we've got going on.
Hey everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. John Oney and Neil Duncan here. And uh, this second segment brought to us by People's Barbecue. Some great skiing action there. Yeah, it was. How excited. Do you ski? I don't ski, uh, but Can I you, like to watch. It's you fun. pulled behind a boat? No, I don't do well with the water sport thing, so I don't know what it is. But, uh, but yeah, great footage. Good event. Exciting. Do you? No. Mm. Okay. I wasn't going anywhere with that. I just wanted to know if you do I, water skiing. I don't. Well, <laughs> we're crashing fast here, but <laughs> our second segment here, we're going to talk about a, a great event. Of course, the Polk Museum of Art uh, continuously brings in fantastic events to the Lakeland area, and uh, Polk County as a whole has uh, just great arts and culture and, and heritage events. And uh, we now want to welcome Sandy Haran to the show from the Polk Museum of Art and tell us about a great event. Yes, we have a great thing coming up um, in a couple of weeks, June 20th and 21st. We'll be celebrating Go Skateboarding Day with InnoSkate, which is a program of the Smithsonian Institution's Limelson Center for the Study of Invention and Innovation. That's a mouthful. They're, that's a division of the American History Museum, and they created InnoSkate last year to celebrate the 10th Global Go Skateboarding Day. Um, because skateboarding, you know, has had huge impact on everything from culture and fashion and art to, of course, sports and X Games and all that stuff were sort of born from skateboarding right. culture. It really is, and, and I watched, I had a chance to do a little bit of research before the show today, and um, great video on your website about all the things that go on that day, and just to kind of see um, the different panels that you have. There's an yeah. education component, there's an art component, and yeah, of course there's an obstacle component. It's oh, really yeah. fun. It's going to be really fun. Um, we're the only official site for Go Skateboarding Day in the country this year. Oh, wow. The International Association of Skateboard Companies is on, on board so to speak, and they're going to be here. Josh Freeberg, who's their um, CEO, is going to be hanging out with us that weekend. Um, the Mohai in Seattle, which is also a Smithsonian institu uh, Institution affiliate like we are, will be having a similar event in August, but we're it for the June 21st date, which is a really exciting thing for us. What is team pain obstacles? Because <laughs> obviously that jumped right out at me. I, I don't know that I want to be going through an obstacle course that is named Team Pain. Well, there's yeah. a guy named Tim Payne. Okay. Close, right? Okay. And he okay. is see from. What you're doing there. Okay, I see yeah. what I'm doing there. Okay, so Tim Payne um, builds skateboard parks. Okay. He built the one at Lake Bonnie, the Lakeland oh, okay. Skate Park. Oh, yeah. And he builds them all over the world. That's his job. And his company is called Team Payne. They built these skate spots, um, which are sort of movable obstacles. They weigh about 8,000 pounds each, so you can't move them easily, but they are technically mobile skate spots. And um, somebody donated them to the city of Lakeland a few years ago, and the city is letting us borrow them for the weekend, so we're going to be putting them in our parking lot. And the Team Payne people are actually coming in and refinishing them. I guess they like to make them, they paint them and make them really slick before people skate on them. <laughs> So assuming there's a waiver of here. Yes, there's definitely a waiver. Um, and it's on our website, so you can print it out and sign it. Or Which if you're, uh, it's polkmuseumofart.org slash okay. And you can print out the waiver in advance and sign it so that you're ready to skate that weekend. Um, or if you're under 18, you should probably have your parent right. sign it. Uh, but I don't think they require a waiver over at the skate park. But if you're in our parking lot, we sort of are asking that you please yeah. sign the waiver. Right. And, um, but we're, but you know, I think it's going to be a very mellow, laid back event. I don't think there's going to be any problems. But the, the skate spots will make things interesting and fun. It sounds like a great event, and, and it's a two day event, right? It is. Friday right night. On Friday yeah, Saturday. Friday night's really just a big kickoff party because okay. we like to throw parties, yeah, and, okay. you know, it's fun. We're going to have um, live bands all night with some pretty fun music, and then uh, food trucks in the parking lot because that's the hip thing to do now. Can't go, Can't go wrong with the food trucks. And then we're going to have the skate spots, and they'll be open for skating Friday night. And then Saturday morning, the fun will move to the skate park over at Lake Bonnie where we'll have um, a couple of panel discussions from pretty smart people about how the boards have evolved. And they're going to have some of the pro skaters who are there try some tricks on boards from like the 60s and 70s, and then and they can't do them. Like, show us how you do that on your board, and then try it from this older 20, 30-year-old board and see how that works for you. <laughs> So it's going to be fun, right? It's going to be fun. And, and it's interesting when you talk about the way it, it has evolved over the years. It's and been huge. It, it really has. It's part mm -hmm. of the fabric of, of American history now. It and is. obviously the museums and bring oh, them sure. together. I think it's just a great concept. It's 
very cool. And the, um, one of the people who's going to be on our panel discussion and hanging out with us for the weekend is Paul Schmidt, who owns like the nation's largest manufacturer of skateboard skateboards, I guess. Yeah. And he um, does custom boards for professional skaters and stuff. And he's going to be talking about how the decks have evolved so that people can do more elaborate tricks. And now they, you know, they can build them to match your body type and your height and all that so that you can jump higher and farther and all that. You know, some of the wheels back then were metal and they were mm -hmm. small and now they're, they're different, differently made and the technology that's infused in these boards are, are really interesting. But um, tell us, there's one component to this event where they're actually going to ride from Lake Bonnie on yes. the road to the museum? Yes, people keep saying to me, is this true? Is yeah. this a rumor? No, it's true. Um, the Lakeland police are helping us uh, have a rolling roadblock. We can't say we're closing down Bartow Highway, but we will be moving difficult. slowly. <laughs> um, the cops are leading the way, and we're going to um, let all the skateboarders skate from skate park to the Polk Museum of Art. So we're going to go down Bartow Highway and then turn on Hollingsworth Drive and then onto Palmetto. There we I mean, are. That's not something we do you be, see all the time. No, that's it, kind of it's neat. really cool. And you know, the city of Lakeland um, also was kind enough to issue a proclamation to make Lakeland a skateboard friendly city for the weekend. So it's going to all be very cool. And the skateboard community is kind of blown away by that. <laughs> and I, I think it's really awesome that everybody's on board and the city's being really helpful with all this stuff. The Smithsonian people are coming down because they're curious to see how it's going to work. And it's going to be a very well, cool Well, it's a testament to the Polk Museum of Art being, you know, this, they didn't, this isn't going to everyone. Mm -hmm. This is coming to Lakeland and to Polk right. County, and mm -hmm. that's testament for what you guys have done. And there. the fact that the city is being so cooperative was a big right. part of that. You know, the city has been very helpful in opening doors and making sure that things go very smoothly. Um, I think that's because we have a good reputation as right. well as a good relationship with them, and they know that we're not going to do anything to dangerous. Right, yeah, just right. interesting. Fun. Well, well right. speaking of opening doors, and, and, and we can come back and finish on the Innoscape, but I want to talk about it. It's summertime. It kids is. are out of school. What mm -hmm. programs do you guys have right now for Well, uh, we have summer, summer art camp all mm -hmm. summer um, for kids from 7 to 14, I think. There's also a few workshops for adults in digital photography and some other um, cool things like calligraphy and things like that. But um, you know, one of the neatest things is we're open for free to everybody on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. And in a couple of weeks, the week of June 22nd, I think is the date, to the 26th, um, that whole week, we're open for free to everybody the whole week. It's going to be uh, in honor of Lois Kyles Harrison and Homer Hooks, who died just yesterday, yeah. actually. And um, they were great patrons of the museum and were always real advocates for accessibility in the arts. and just letting everybody in, you know, having a place for people to go that's safe and fun. And so in their honor, we are opening our doors for free that week. Your free dates. Uh, our free dates are always Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And that's brought to you because, because of a sponsor of sponsors, as well, right? Yeah, yeah. on yeah. Thursdays, it's for the Chow Foundation. On Fridays, it's bb and And on Saturdays, it's Mid-Florida. Well, sponsors They're certainly. They're all great help, great, greatly help us. Yeah, you look at like Sun of Fun Flying, where, uh, you know, with the, the air traffic controllers, where yeah. Visit Florida came on mm -hmm. as a major mm -hmm. partner, the uh, Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. Yeah. So partners are very important. I was surprised to see on the flyer here that you don't have a medical provider as a major <laughs> sponsor of the no. Innoscate event. No, but part of our agreement with the city oh, is okay. that um, the ambulances will be the services are in the area. Because accidents yes. do happen. It, yeah. do, it does you happen, know. you know, but we're hoping that it will be, you know, if somebody falls off their board that they'll be okay and brush it off and keep going. That's why we but, have you helmets. Know, we try to be careful. That's right. Yeah, that's why that's you right. wear helmets. That's right. And that's that's right. We, we try to be there. careful. Yeah. Before we let you get out of here, Mayfair just happened not Mayfair too long ago. Happened. Tell us about the event and, and what uh, what the numbers are. I mean, strong numbers again. Yes, it was huge, actually. We had good weather, which helps a lot. Um, I think we had a few thousand more people over the course of the weekend than we did in last year, even. It was about 68,000 over the course, because we just kind of do it by crowd shots and, you know, an educated guesstimate, basically. Um, but it was a great crowd both days. Sales were up. All the artists said they were selling things like crazy. Attendance in the museum was phenomenal, like 1,400 people over the course of the weekend. Um, so it was really good. And the children's tent that had like record numbers. I mean, it was really a good weekend. It's just a great way to showcase not only the museum, but 
our great community in Lakeland awesome. and really the county as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, been phenomenal. It's it's really good. So just keep that keep that hard work up because oh, yeah, we know how hard that is to it do. It is do. a you know people think that we just throw that thing together in March <laughs> or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, I'll be doing calls to mm. artists ads about July. So mm. you know we work well, on it on and off all yeah. year. And it's funny you think about that area and it's so mm -hmm. perfect and in, in Lake awesome. Mirror with all the activities and mm -hmm. stuff. In fact. When we went over to Greece to recruit the uh, International Practical Shooting Confederation's mm -hmm. World Shoot, um, we're sitting in the Greek ruins for the opening ceremonies. Awesome. And, and it's funny where you think about, we were trying to think, where would we put this? Mm -hmm. And when you live in your own community for so long, you take, it, you take for granted the great things that we have. That facility is fantastic. Mm -hmm. And thinking about Mayfair was like, well, if Mayfair can pull it off with that kind of crowd in that, in that venue, mm -hmm. this would be a perfect venue for the world mm -hmm. shoot. So. Yeah, absolutely. Lake Mirror is, is a, great, a great place for us yeah. to be on Saturday night. Mayfair Saturday night was terrific this year. We had fireworks and the band was rocking. It was really an awesome event. When they say Lake Mirror is one of the most photographed lakes mm -hmm. it's in so the beautiful. state or something, something like, like that. that. It's, yeah. it's well, really, it's not true, it's world it renowned. Be, right? It is beautiful. It should be. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> Sandy, before we go, give us the website again. Uh, give us the dates for inline, uh, not inline skating. <laughs> in skating. In skating. <laughs> I knew I was going to do it once, <laughs> but in skating and uh, again, uh, the hours of the museum and how people can get involved. Sure. Um, so it, you can find out more about Enoskate at www.polkmuseumofart.org slash Enoskate. Um, and I wanted to thank our sponsors. You were talking about sponsors and how they Absolutely. make it happen. Um, in addition to the Limelson Center and the City of Lakeland, we really want to thank IASC, which is the International Association of Skateboard Companies, because they've been great about getting this word out, as well as our friends at the border over in Tampa. Their social media maniacs and they're putting us all over Instagram and Twitter and so forth. Great um, uh, marketing for Polk County. Oh, it's been awesome. And um, we got some cold hard cash which helps pay for this event, which is free. Which is always good. Which is That's free good. for the whole yeah, weekend yeah. to everyone. Free is, a good price. free is an excellent price and um, that money came from the Wrightsville Foundation, Fifth Third Bank and Keller Williams as well as some other people who are donating in kind things that are going to make our lives a lot easier yeah. for the weekend, it's like really water. Good and Powerade and things like that. So it, it's been a great, it's been a great community effort. Um, you can come to the museum all summer between 10 and 5, Tuesday through Saturday. And as I said, we're free Thursday, Friday, and Saturday every week. It's a great deal. All right. You it's, can't beat that. You can't beat free. And they have a great, uh, you have a great uh, merchandise area in there. You oh can buy gosh. some The shop cool is, things. yeah, where am I doing my favorite shop? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Great stuff. Well, Inno Skate, not Inno Inline skate. Skating. Inno, Inno Skate, skate uh, June 20th and 21st. At the Polk Museum of Art. Polk Museum of Art on Friday night and Saturday afternoon and at Lake Bonnie Skate Park Saturday morning. All Looking right. forward to Sandy, it. thank you so much. Thank you. And if uh, skateboarding isn't your thing, maybe bicycling here in Central Florida is, and we've got some great bicycling tips. Check that out. John and Neil will be right back here on Sports Central. to get you on the road when you're ready to up your game on the bike. When you're ready to move up in cycling and maybe step up your game, get in the saddle a little bit longer, or even consider some competitive cycling, there's a few other things that you need to remember. For one, always wear your helmet. That is your number one thing that you should put on anytime you go to get on your bicycle. The second thing to remember is comfort. The uniforms that we wear or the kits that we wear provide additional comfort when you're on the bike. For one, it wicks away the sweat so it keeps you cooler, but also the pants are specially formulated with a padding in them. So when you're spending a lot of time on the saddle, it doesn't rub you the wrong way. Your shoes actually clip into your pedals. They're specially formulated so when you get on your bike, you put on your pedals and you clip right in. You hear two snaps, you know you're connected to the bike. This helps you with your pedal stroke, so you're not only pushing down with your legs, but you're also pulling up, so it gives you more power. The other thing when you become a little bit more comfortable in cycling is your gearing. Your gearing is important because it'll make your ride a little bit more comfortable by going really hard 
or maybe going a little bit easier. So here's the things that are pretty easy to remember. For one, your brakes. Your right brake controls your rear tire, so right rear. The left side controls your front tire. The gearing in the front is specially formulated too to make it easier or a little bit harder for riding. When you're in the back, it's a little bit easier. In your rear cassette, when you're in the top cog, that's a little bit easier. As you move down in the back and up in the front, it makes it a little bit harder to push the pedals, but you're gonna go a little faster. These intermediate skills will help you bring your cycling up to the next level. Always wear your protective gear and have fun. Hi everybody, welcome back to Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside John Oney and some great cycling tips there. Yeah, we've got to get out and do a little more cycling. Yeah, you, you got to either get it probably a little bit earlier in the morning in the summertime because those those five o'clock showers are showing up or, and or not later. And mention than, the heat, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but some but good yeah. tips there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, this third segment brought to us by Legoland Florida, another place that a lot of people are headed to mm -hmm. this summer. I went by there the other day, uh, coming back from Universal Shooting Academy, and the place was absolutely packed. So uh, that's a good thing to see. For sure. And you know, they, they've got the lazy river and the pool and all the all the water activities there. So great way to cool off this time of year. Absolutely. We're also uh, right on the heels of the World Cup starting. Uh, of course, the whole whole, uh, whole world will be uh, mm -hmm. watching football, but <laughs> now we're trying to take American football yes. to the UK and uh, joining us now is Ronnie Gent and uh, recently was over in uh, was over in Europe and uh, bringing American football over there and tell us all about it. First of all, welcome to the show. Uh, appreciate but, you for having but tell us about what you're doing. Uh, I'm doing a whole lot of things. I mean, um, basically, we're trying to get the foundation set, uh, starting with the, the youth, so get the youth on track, because right now, you know, in the States, you have Little League football, then you have uh, some type of middle school competition in high school and college, and then, you know, you, you kind of sky's the limit from there. But over in England, it's like they start with the club level, mm -hmm. and then you have university level, and then you have the Premier League, which is like um, equivalent to our semi-pro. So basically, we're trying to just start with the you know grassroots, start with the youth, and, and um, organize. Start out with flag football instead of contact, kind of mm -hmm. kind of teach the game, and then um, kind of go from there as they grow. So. Um, just getting over, I uh, did some consulting work uh, with some of the teams as well, helping out with some university people and just, you know, just trying to make it better. Well, if you're just joining us, we got Ronnie Gent with us, and of course Ronnie, uh, Lakeland High School star, and then went to the University of Louisville and was a uh, was a All Conference USA uh, dominant football player there, and then uh, played four years in the NFL. Yeah. How yeah. was that? How was that experience? Let's back up. I want to talk about yeah, the NFL let's, let's experience. Talk about that. I mean, yeah. we'll get to the the kids and, and all that <laughs> stuff in, in the UK, but let's talk about the NFL and uh, obviously some of the things that you experienced there. You're now taking overseas and and, and promoting American football, but uh, it's hard to be in the league, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, like I say, you got uh, two types of guys. You got guys who go in as draft picks, and then you got guys who come in as free agents. And it's like, you know, it's, it's a never-ending battle. I mean, each and every year you're fighting for a job, and it's a great experience. I mean, it's, it's what you work for as a kid. You know, um, it's kind of funny. I really never th thought that I would uh, be that NFL caliber type guy. And then, you know, all of a sudden, I started progressing in high school, then mm -hmm. in college, had a had a good career, and then, you know, doors of opportunities came open, and uh, I was with the Eagles, Bengals, and the Saints, and uh, it was a great time. Met a lot of great guys. Uh, got to be on the same field as guys that you know I watched growing up as a kid, and mm -hmm. you know to see Tom Brady, to see Peyton Manning, uh, see Michael Vick in his prime. I mean, just mm -hmm. witnessing that from the sideline is just is priceless. You know, and that's the kind of story, and I'm sure the experience translates over when you're helping these kids in, in, in England. Um, you know, not too many people get to do what you've done in right. the past. And so how do you, how do you kind of convey that to the kids? And it's, it's an inspirational story, so it's got to be kind of easy. How, how do you do that? Well, it's like uh, now over in England, you know, the, the dominant sports are, of course, soccer. And then you have rugby, and um, they play cricket. And, um, we're just trying to give them uh, another option. You know, uh, it, it's pretty funny. Um, in like the academies, which is their high school, um, like in the area of Canterbury that we were in, um, 
Chelsea has, you know, uh, academy te- uh, club teams at those academies. So it's like, you know, it just gives you another option if you don't make it to the to the professional level, and it just gives you an, uh, another way to use some of the talents that you have. Because I mean, you know, soccer players are fast guys, have great hips, uh, mm-hmm. rugby guys. They're kind of the same way, have a little aggression, and that would be good to put the pants <laughs> on. Like a little, little, a little, little aggression. Yeah, they're, they're real aggressive. Uh, I mean, and it's just basically what I'm trying to do is take bits and pieces from all the great coaches, um, you know, being with, starting out with Coach Castle at Lakeland, mm-hmm. uh, John L. Smith from uh, Louisville, and then, you know, going to um, Sean Payton, Marvin Lewis, um, Andy Reid, uh, in the UFL, I got to play with uh, Marty Schottenheimer and mm-hmm. uh, Chris Palmer. and I mean, the list goes on. And it's like you take bits and pieces from each coach. I kind of put it in my own little toolbox. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what makes me up as a coach. And I kind of teach that uh, all the things that I've been instilled to the kids and hope, you know, somebody uh, can pick it up and, you know, right. move on. Well, I mentioned on the on as we came into this segment about the World Cup starting, and obviously the whole world's focus is on soccer right now. Uh, it, it, there's always been a long joke that uh, soccer is the number one sport everywhere in the world except for the U.S. Nobody really, you know, but obviously that has changed. And with the Florida Youth Soccer Association's uh, state headquarters being right here at the Lake Hornell Sports Park where we're broadcasting from, um, what's the reception like over there? Because you know, as you said football or, or soccer yeah. and rugby are, are dominant over there. So what's the reception for American football when it comes to the British? Yeah, it's for them, it's football is soccer. So so when you're speaking on our, our version of football, you say American football, mm-hmm. and it's like uh, soccer is pretty dominant over there. And it's it's we're trying to I mean, they they like American football. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of guys, I mean, it, you know, the Super Bowl is like because there is a five hour time difference. So the Super Bowl comes right. on late. So, I mean, mm-hmm. if they're staying up to two, three in the morning to watch the game, obviously right. they're they're very interested. And then as well, pretty soon an uh, NFL team will be there because like they're playing four games in London this year. Right. And all of those games will get sold out. Of so, course, we've seen the Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. go over there and the, the NFL has made a push to to move the brand over there. Right. They So they want American football okay. over there. It's just, you know, you got to get in, lay the foundation. You know, um, they, they're they playing right now, but I think, uh, you know, as far as coaching, it needs, you know, they can do a little better coaching and just the, the awareness of the game. So having people like myself and uh, pretty much uh, the group that I'm with, AFD Limited, uh, American Football Development, mm-hmm. you know, we're trying to just help the sport grow and you know we're like I said we're starting with the youth working with some of the academies and you know the university levels uh, another thing we got going um, they have sister schools so like uh, Christ Church uh, University their sister school is Kansas State and then there's a uh, guy I met uh, over in Tampa he's he's coming over to London uh, doing some studying and then he's gonna walk on at Florida State which He's at Florida State Sister School, so it's like if we can do things like that and get some type of program to where the kids can, you know, after the uh, high school level, go to the university, probably play for a couple of years, and then kind of get them to the states. You know, it gives them a, a real shot at, you know, maybe playing professional football, and it'll be a dream come true if they have a team in London, and then you get to play for your home team. When you talk about uh, Florida State, uh, Bjorn Warner. Uh, the dominant defensive end from Florida State was from Germany originally. Right. Came over here and did well for Florida State. Now I think he plays for the Indianapolis Colts. So there's there's already some evidence of bringing some of the Europeans over and playing in the league. Right. I've seen uh, just looking at a lot of the talent that they have. They have a lot of great talent. I mean, it's just like I said, it's being caught up in the system that they are. It's like where do you go from here? And it's like um, mm-hmm. you know you just have to create different avenues and different ways for them to use their talent and go as far as they can go. You know, talk about the team a little bit. I mean, you have to have a good team to, to make these things, these events successful. So, you know, what are some of the names, who are some of the team members you brought in um, to make this happen over there? Uh, I'm working currently from the U.S. side as uh, Derek Fournier and Derek McBride. And, you know, we're teamed up. We're part of as uh, the American team, you know, going over with uh, AFD Lemon. And then we have, uh, you know, uh, 
Ricky is our is the big boss, and then Gore, of course, they make up the the British team. And um, you know, we're just coming together, and you know, we're putting on uh, camps and uh, trying to start this flag football mm -hmm. league, and you know, kind of help it grow. And as you know, I get over there and get my feet wet. Um, and as it grows, I'm gonna need help. So I'm reaching out to all my friends here now. You know, hey, just keep you know doing what you're doing, and you know, once opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that call, and you know, just be ready. Well, I know uh, some years ago we were invited over to uh, to China, uh, ended up in Shanghai to uh, speak and and be part of a discussion about. Uh, recreational sports because in China it's all about the Olympic development not necessarily is there recreational sports offered to the, to the citizens uh, of, of China are the recreational sports offered to to the British citizens or how is that how is that aligned is it just through the schools um, they have some recreation but it's, it's like it's mostly like I said it's sports that they know which is you know soccer and rugby and, right. and, and, and cricket and you know so we're trying to give another uh, you know avenue to play a different sport and okay. like I said there's a there's a want for it and a, and a need for what we're doing and um, one of the guys that worked with us at the last count Byron Chamberlain he's a Super Bowl champion uh, pro bowler tight end he he's over in China doing some things with them now so it's like you know we're kind of like I said we got some people that's on our faculty that's you know doing some Things as well as myself, and you know, if you bring in the right people, I think you know this. It, it will grow and it will it will get big. So, Ronnie, when you're when you're not uh, on a plane going to Europe and <laughs> eating bangers and mash over there like they, they, I'm just they eat, say, have the, you? Have the the, yeah, we need to talk about the food. Who do you need? Do you need us to go with you? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, food's a little different, um, but. I'm a cook myself, so you know I can kind of. As long as I bring some some herbs and spices from the states, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I found some great restaurants over there. So it's, I mean, it's it's a different variety. It's different, but I mean that's like like anything. Everywhere you go, uh, McDonald's different. It's 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 kind of weird. You you wouldn't think that, you know, McDonald's would be different, but you know it's it says McDonald's, but. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I was at McDonald's in Shanghai. It's different. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it is it's, certainly it's different. different. But I mean, it's because of you know the way, the makeup of the different places and you know uh, the restrictions that they have on food and stuff. So it's it's different. But you know, I'll keep those care packages coming in. And <laughs> I, I'll survive. I mean, it, it'll go back to my college days. How mom used to send me that that good box with. Uh, you know the noodles and you know underwear and you know long johns because it was cold and you know uh, just good little care package. So I'll keep that rolling. Well, Ronnie, keep us in mind too because I know uh, I'm available to go over there and uh, and throw the football, or do whatever. Not that you I've ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sign me up and sign me up as well. We'll head over there for you. Well, we'd love to have you over, man. I, mean, you I think it's a great opportunity and it's you know. Um, you know, we would love to have you guys help us out and, you know, kind of get that story out there and, you know, let everybody know what we got going on. Mm -hmm. Well, it's also important to mention to, for the citizens at home watching uh, Sports Central that uh, the British visitation to Polk County is very high and it's a main component of some of our visitors coming here to Polk County. So uh, there's already a pipeline of those uh, those citizens over there that come into Central Florida for vacation. So we would love to maybe sit down and uh, a camp you have over there ends up being a camp over here mm -hmm, kind right. of thing. And, and going back and forth, but uh, we appreciate your time. Good luck on this endeavor. Uh, one, one final question, though. Uh, do you think that we will see the NFL having multiple teams uh, in Europe before this is all said and done? I think uh, part of Roger Goodell's legacy, he wants to have a team over there, and I mean, it, it makes sense, but I, I don't think that, I think they should have their own team. I don't think that we should relocate a team mm, right. over here. I mean, because yeah. if you know, I don't want to call out any names, but if you take a team over here that's not doing too good and mm -hmm. you go over there, it's still the same team, just a different name. <laughs> so, <laughs> but wouldn't they have to do multiple teams because uh, that that travel schedule is going to be kind of rough? You know, going to the West Coast is going to look like a, a cakewalk compared to having to go to the UK to play well, to be away honest, game. Which is, it's it's the same format. It's like uh, eight and a half going over and nine and a half coming back. So to go to the West Coast, it's. Uh, what a five-hour direct flight trip. So I mean, it's a. So it's not that much. Hour. It's not that mm. bad. It's just like if uh, 
you know, for East Coast teams going to the West, they always go out a couple days. Go out early so to get adjusted. I, to the I time. would think that you would go over and you know probably a week earlier, uh, and just uh, the best thing would be to have the bye week the next week. So uh, you know, yeah. it, it, it it'll work. You know, I mean, and, and I think the NFL guys would be excited as well because it's. I mean, it's once in a lifetime opportunity to take right. your family over and just experience all the. I mean, just just to see Big Ben in person and yeah. see all the. I mean, I've been in buildings that was built in like you know the 1800s and it's still standing. Yeah, and it's like working functionally the whole nine. That's just mind blowing. <laughs> well, I wonder what the IRS would do with those big salaries if you're over in the UK, but they'd probably find a way to get their hands on some of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they'll figure it out. They'll yeah, figure it they'll out. Make it work. All right, Ronnie, thank you so much, and uh, we appreciate all you're doing, and uh, hopefully we can have you on soon uh, to talk about uh, the further development of American football in the UK. Yeah, appreciate you guys for having me. All right. Well, recently we were able to catch up with Heather, Heather Novice, excuse me, uh, softball player at McKeel Academy. Uh, let's take a look at that footage. We'll be right back on Sports Central. I started playing softball whenever I was five years old. I actually started out in t-ball and moved up. Um, I started playing because my older brother and sister were also playing and I wanted to do what they were doing as a little kid. My favorite athlete is Tim Hudson on the Atlanta Braves because whenever my brother had cancer, he was nice to us and um, his life is very nice and they toured us around. My brother and my sister inspired me to play softball. My favorite subject would have to be English. I play volleyball for McKeel also. Um, I volunteer at the VFW. My biggest accomplishment is being able to grow up and mold like I did with the coaches that I've had over the years, Nikki Krauss and Mark Krauss and my teammates. We've all came together and molded to where we can actually become a really good team. The future holds for me that I'm going to become a nurse at Polk State College. I have a full scholarship there. They're paying me the whole way and all my books and they have a great nursing program and that's what I'm going for. I have a lot of different songs on my iPad like country or hip-hop or dubstep or rock. I listen to everything. My best friend would say I am very aggressive about everything that I do. I do it to my best advantage, and if it's anything even arguing, I have to win or get ahead. One word to describe myself would be hard worker. That I'm, like, I always work hard, I always practice even whenever we have days off. I hit at home to get better with my hitting so I can do my full accomplishments out on the field. My pre-games superstition and rituals would have to be my whole team every game day post a picture saying hashtag game day. It's one of our things that we always do. Um, before games we pray for everybody to stay safe and us to have a nice game and for him to look over us. Um, other things that I do outside of school is I'll go fishing and I'll go hunting. We hunt pigs and with dogs and we fish out a big lake out in our pasture. everybody, welcome back to the fourth and final segment of Sports Central. Neil Duncan alongside John Oney in this last segment brought to us by Abuelo's. Great place to eat. It really is, especially uh, we were just talking about how uh, how hungry are we are at this point in the show, fourth Seems like segment. It's always sponsored by somebody in the food it industry. It really does, and so now we're even more hungry. So, uh. <laughs> Well, a lot of great uh, events going on here in Polk County. You can always go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org. Uh, but some of the events, we already had uh, a couple of the guys on the show talking about the Sunshine State games. They're going to be in wrestling, and you called me out about I not did. knowing the seven sports. Do you know the seven sports? Don't look. I know wrestling. Okay. Um, 
Uh, taekwondo, yeah. fencing, which is, is one sport that we may not see a, a whole lot of here in the county. Right. Uh, table tennis, taekwondo, I, I, think I want to say already. wrestling, did I mention wrestling? Weightlifting I wrestling and uh, karate. <laughs> Judo <laughs> might be the other. You have no idea. Seven total. <laughs> All we know is a lot of athletes coming to Polk County, great economic impact, and we appreciate the uh, partnership with the Florida Sports Foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, we mentioned earlier about uh, Visit Florida coming in to the rescue again for the uh, Sun of Fun Fly-In, the Florida Restaurant and Lodging. You can't forget the Florida Sports Foundation, all the great work that they do around the state of Florida, and they certainly partner with us. Yeah, great partners for us. And, and just to throw out those dates for the Sunshine State game, Saturday, June 22nd, Sunday, June 22nd, at the Lakeland Center, Simpson Park, and I believe the wrestling components at Lakeland High School. So a uh, lot to look forward to over that uh, couple day window. Absolutely. Well, recently it was announced who the Hall of Fame class uh, would be for the, uh, the award ceremony June 24th at the Lakeland Center, the Polk County Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about who they are and uh, it's a great event. It really is, and that it's that time of year again, 14th year for us, I believe. Mm -hmm. doing, and next year, big 15th doing anniversary this, so. of the All Sports Awards. Yeah, it's exciting, and uh, we've got a great slate of inductees this year for the Hall of Fame, uh, led by the late Thomas Bryant. The 2014 class has four others, which would be a Santa Fe Catholic baseball coach, David Saliba, mm -hmm. um, Bartow volleyball coach, athletic director, Marnie Cobb right. is one, Polk State athletic director, Bing Tyus. Yep and uh, Florida Southern's women's tennis coach, Ed Jeffries, to, to round it out. I think I've got them all. Yeah. Um, but a really special night in store for us and for the inductees and for Absolutely. the rest of the, uh, the award winners. Well, and of course, the Ledger Media Group, great partners with this event to uh, help put it on, and the, the prep athletes of the year and their different sports and the coaches of the year, but also the uh, Polk County All Sports Awards uh, awards. Professional athlete of the year will be Andrew McCutcheon, and uh, there's so many to pick from, but you, you had to think that was pretty obvious because he won the National League MVP last year. Yeah, and, and you know, his roots are obviously here Fort from, from Polk yeah. County, grew up in Fort Meade, and, and so we had a, a special, maybe not us, but Polk County had a special uh, front stage seat watching his career mm -hmm. unfold, starting out in Little League. Going into high school and straight to and the, straight to the bigs. Yep, he's, so. he's uh, done Polk County proud, and yes. uh, he'll be yes. honored June 24th for the All Sports Awards. Bernie Little, uh, Sports Executive of the Year, is Bing Tyus, so a, a, a big night for Bing. Yeah, he's he got a, a twofer. He gets inducted to the Hall of Fame, and he's also the uh, Bernie Little Sports Executive of the Year Commissioner's mm -hmm. Award uh, goes to uh, Angel Walker, Male Amateur Athlete of the Year Sam Horsfield from Ridge High School, Female Athlete of the Year is Bree Folds from Lake. Christian, Male Collegiate Athlete of the Year, Tim Crouch won another national championship Second. at Florida Southern yep. College in golf. Uh, female Collegiate Athlete of the Year, of course, Hannah Rogers just won a national championship with the University of Florida in softball. She will be the Female Collegiate Athlete of the Year. Male Prep Team of the Year, Winter Haven High School baseball team, very close to winning that state championship. I think the finals, they lost by one run. Yeah, they uh, really were close this year. They really were. And showed some great sportsmanship at the end of that game. I mm -hmm. don't know that everybody saw that, but uh, uh, great sportsmanship uh, by the Winter Haven High School baseball team. Female prep team of the year, uh, Lakeland Christian soccer, Female Collegiate Team of the Year, Weber International University Bowling, another national championship for Weber. They've got a legacy going down down there. I mean, they it's, they've got a little bit of history and obviously a lot of history and uh, right. some great uh, bowling coming out of that school. Yeah, well, being at the Kegel Bowling Center, mm -hmm. uh, that place is fantastic True. right there in Lake Wales. Uh, the facility is second to none in the world. Uh, if you want to bowl in Shanghai, China, and you know the mm -hmm. lane specs, they can create it there for you. And that's a competitive advantage to anyone who trains there. Yeah, it really is. And you know, you need to have these facilities to, to sort of develop the sport and to develop and need a high high end athlete that, that these, you know, like Weber is producing. Right. So. Male Collegiate Team of the Year will be Southeastern University basketball. They had a great season. So join us June twenty fourth at the Lakeland Center for the Polk County All Sports Awards and Hall of Fame induction ceremony presented by the Ledger Media Group. And we appreciate them. We also appreciate Bright House Sports Network as they bring that event live out there every year. Some other events. We can't forget about our Lakeland Flying Tigers. Lakeland Flying Tigers have a homestand starting Wednesday, June 18th versus Clearwater, uh, Friday, June 20th versus Tampa, and then uh, continuing on the weekend, Sunday, June 22nd, back with uh, Clearwater, and then Monday, uh, which I think is the dollar 
dollar night special. Yeah. Um, they've got another game against Clearwater, so a nice four-game homestand. Well, there, they're so. playing really well right now, so maybe we'll see another state championship from the Detroit mm -hmm. uh, Tigers, the Lakeland Flying Tigers, rather. Um, and did want to back up for a second. I, I forgot. Uh, the Bartow High School cheerleaders will also be honored at the uh, Polk County All Sports Awards and the Circle of Champions as they won a state championship in cheerleading. I didn't want to, no, didn't want to slight point. them there, yep. but I uh, want to mention that. The WABA Father's Day Invitational, uh, Saturday, June 14th and 15th at the Lake Portal Sports Park. Florida ISA Adult NIT uh, will be June 14th and 15th at Lois Hart Park. Uh, Florida Pride Wrestling. They've got an event coming up uh, Sunday, June 15th through June 20th, and that's at Weber International University. Uh, so a lot of great events going on. Again, the Sunshine State Games coming here to Polk County. We want to thank Gage Hollingsworth mm -hmm. and uh, Philip Monte, and we'll wish them good luck as uh, they're from Lakeland High School. They'll be competing in that event. And of course, we want to thank Sandy Horan from the Polk Museum of Art uh, with InnoSkate, and that event's coming up as well. Yeah, it really is. What a unique event that is, and we're, we're certainly pride, uh, proud to have uh, have them in our community doing things like that. So, absolutely, be good to see. Absolutely. Don't forget the U.S. Adult Soccer Association will be hosting the 2014 National Women's Championships at the Lake Merle Sports Park. That'll be Thursday, June 26th through Sunday, June 29th. So we're home of the Florida Youth Soccer Association State Headquarters. We're also home of the Florida State Soccer Association. So once they, they age out of the youth soccer, they can go right into the uh, adult division. And uh, we're, we're glad to have that event coming to Polk County. Neil, one event I want to really mm -hmm. mention is the 2014 USTA Southeast Region Baton Twirling Championships. That's Friday, June 20th through Sunday, June 22nd um, at Polk State College. So uh, that's kind of a big event for, for that, for that uh, national governing body. So we're looking forward to having them. Absolutely. We also want to thank sponsors because, as Sandy said earlier in the show, we can't uh, put on events and you certainly can't put on shows like this without uh, great partners. Uh, some of our partners that made this show possible, Sunsplash Vacation Homes, Holiday Inn Winter Haven, Holiday Inn Express Lakeland, uh, Hungry Howie's, and the Ledger Media Group. We'd like to thank you for watching and all of our sponsors, as we just mentioned. Uh, again, go to centralfloridasports.com or visit centralflorida.org. Or if you want tickets to the Polk County All Sports Sports, give us a call at 863-551-4750. The next edition of Sports Central will be on Friday, June 27th. Until then, you can watch this program here uh, are the following dates and times, so check this out. For John Oney, this is Neil Duncan. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate the Board of County Commissioners and PGTV for making this show possible. We'll see you again next time.